Hi, I'm Nikki, the obsessive bookseller. Welcome to this episode of Read, Burn, Hoard. So, I have some updates for you. So, as some of you may have seen, I have lost a lot of footage recently, and part of that included two full Read, Burn, Hoard vlogs. I have some personal time that I need to take off at the end of November, and I was trying to get a little bit ahead of schedule, so I did two complete shelves, expedited the project, and now have lost all of the footage. And I thought about going back and trying to recreate it, but it would just be so disingenuous. You know, like you can't, you can't recreate authentically like that in the moment decision making. And what it also did was throw me off schedule. So I had October's book read last month. And then for November's book, I was supposed to read it this month and, you know, post it for next month. But I have yet to read the next book on the shelf, which if you caught my tackling the TBR is the Howl's Moving Castle, the book version of that. Well, duh. So by the time this video is supposed to go live, I will not have had a chance to read that book yet. So here's what I think I'm going to do. I've been percolating on this for about a month trying to figure out how to salvage the project. So I have the sections that I worked on. I'm going to go through and kind of show you a little bit of my thought process, the books that I ended up unhauling, the ones that I'm keeping for both shelves, and then the book that I read for this month. Instead of doing a vlog, I'll just give you a summary of how it went for me. And then I think I'll be saving Howl's Moving Castle as an update for the next Read Burn Horde. And that way you at least see what kind of progress I made in the library, but yeah, you don't have to suffer through an attempt at a recreation. So anyway, first things first, the one that was originally scheduled to go up this month, I will show you that shelf and I'll show you everything that I ended up keeping and then I'll show you some of the books that I ended up unhauling for that part. And then we'll move on to the next one. Shelf 27, up at the top there. A lot of really good titles. These are the ones that I decided to keep. Let's get closer. Okay, so I did some rearranging since, but... Got the Kristen Painter series, The House of Khmer. I read the first one ages ago and really liked that one. Decided to keep The Skewed Throne, the series here by Joshua Palmettier. And then I do this every time where I think it's one series, but it's two. Okay. And then I've got The Silver Lake by Fiona Patton, The Warriors of Estevia. So I've got books one and two there. Some books by Vicki Peterson here. The Sign of the Zodiac, one that I've been hanging on to for ages. And then another kind of like 1920s inspired, 1950s, I don't even know. Rinse Wind, The Wizard. This is a science fiction book club compilation of Terry Pratchett's first three books, starting with The Color of Magic. And I know a lot of you would probably prefer that I had read that one because he's so popular on BookTube right now, but I just don't have it in me yet. Eventually, though. Ended up keeping one of the few Forgotten Realms that's not a Dritz book, because it's by Tim Pratt, who wrote my favorite Marla Mason series. So I kept that one. His Dark Materials trilogy by Philip Pullman. I've only read the first book. Eventually, I would like to reread and go back and finish. The Esther Diamond series. This is a another urban fantasy. This is a very urban fantasy heavy shelf. I love these titles. Doppelgangster, Unsympathetic Magic, Abracadaver. Like, they're just really clever. Now, I did read the first one a while ago, and it was it was just okay. It was like a three-star read, but I try not to judge an urban fantasy by the first book because almost every single one that I've read has gotten better as it's gone along. Poltergeist, book two in the Grey Walker series by Kat Richardson. There Will Be Dragons by John Ringo, and it looks like a really interesting sci-fi fantasy mashup, and he's one of like the more popular selling authors over the years in sci-fi, so I at least want to give him tr a try, and if there will be dragons, I'm totally there. Caravans in Deepwood, that one doesn't have a cover, by Jennifer Roberson. This one almost one as the book that I read for the month, but I decided I was more in the mood for one of the urban fantasies. 
Christopher Rowley's Wizard in the Floating City. I believe this is a standalone. I read one book out of his Basil Broketail series and thought it was pretty good, so I thought I'd hang on to that one. Now, I have the Sun Eater Saga here, and one might ask if I'm so excited to read the series, why didn't I pick it to read for this project? And it felt like kind of cheating, because I know I'm going to read it anyway, and the whole point of this series is to pick up something that wouldn't have gotten attention otherwise. So I decided not to read that one yet, but I'm kind of sad. <laughs> I'd like to. And then the duology that came out after the fact for... It's a Raven's Blade novel. I love Blood Song. It's how I found the author, and I really have loved everything he's done since, just about, except for Pariah. But I find it hard to go back to a series when I thought it was already complete, so that's why I haven't touched those. Anyway, what I ended up reading to explore this series, even though I don't have a physical copy of the first one, I ended up picking up Scent of Shadows by Vicki Peterson, first book in the Zodiac series, and I'll let you know how that went. Yeah, so many urban fantasy books in that section, and I was already in the mood for an urban fantasy, so I thought, oh, perfect, kill two birds with one stone. So I picked up Scent of Shadows. It does not have an audio version, but I had time, so I read a physical copy. Or an ebook, rather. I physically read it, is what I'm saying. And I really enjoyed it. Now, this is, of all the ones that I've read, this is one of the least recommendable, because as I was reading, I kept thinking, oh, that's a little weird. That's not going to work for everybody. Oh, I'm going to have to put in a disclaimer about that. Oh, that's... Okay, just go with it. But even so, I still liked it. I think I liked the basic flow of the story. I liked the unconventionality of the story, and I think I liked the background of the story. It's been one of those ones that I've been shelving for years. I've seen it everywhere, and I, I kind of view it as one of the first movers in the urban fantasy genre. It was available to purchase for as far back as I can remember getting into the genre. It takes place in Vegas. There's a secret society... This girl kind of gets swept up into it after some tragedy. The first half was very slowly paced, get to know the character type of thing, and kind of get her family dynamics. And this whole book honestly felt like one big prequel, but one that I enjoyed. How it compares to some of the other urban fantasies that I love, like not quite as strong just because it's not as recommendable, but I find myself eager to pick up the next one to see where it goes and hopefully it'll kind of grow from there now that everything is established in this world and I know what to expect. So yes, I like that one. I remember myself talking in the vlogging content about how I'm not sure that this is going to be something that uh, was going to work for me, but yeah, I found myself drawn to it and picking it up and reading it in weird places, so that's always a good indication. Okay, let's talk about the books I decided to unhaul. I really like these little copies. It's The Dragon Nimbus 1 and 2 by Irene Radford. The very first book is The Glass Dragon. I thought this was going to be a kind of a fantasy sci-fi hybrid, but no, it's apparently kind of a weak romance fantasy story. And I've mentioned it before, if I want a good romance, I'm going to pick up a new adult novel that that's the whole focus. That's the author's main skill is telling romance stories. I don't really want one for a fan with like a fantasy twist because it ends up being kind of a half-assed romance novel and a half-assed fantasy story. It's nothing really robust. Ultimately, I think it was the lackluster reviews for it and flipping through and reading. Like I spot read the first 50 pages or so and just wasn't really interested in it. So even though I like these ch like chunky little paperbacks and think they're cool, I decided that this series with all of the other books that I ended up keeping, was not going to get read over any of the things that are still on the shelf. Getting rid of strip copies of the three books in the Jane True novels series by Nicole Peeler. These ones, when I very first started this project, I remember looking at my shelves going, I'm probably going to unhaul those. Because of all the urban fantasies that I want to read, this, this one wasn't really that high up on the priority list. Um, it does get some kudos for it being kind of unique. I think she's a Selkie, half Selkie or something like that. 
But I thought, okay, so I've got it marked as want to read on Goodreads. And if I ever randomly decide to pick it up, then I can just pick up any copy because it is available. And if I really, really love the story and it surprises me, then I'm not going to want strip covers. I'm going to go want to buy the series. But I don't need a representation on my shelves because I will never, ever pick this one up over everything I have going on and give it a go. So that's ultimately why I decided to let those go. And then Kadia Raymond, Winds from a Foreign Sky. This has all of the tropes that drive me crazy in stories. Like prophecies. I don't like knowing anything about what's going to come up in a book and prophecies always kind of ruin stuff. Uh, the Chosen One, Twin Sisters, Pastoral, lots of travel. I don't know. I read, I did a ton of research on this book for that original vlog and I still can't tell you what it was about. It went in and out of my brain so fast. So I've been hanging on to this one for quite a while and I just don't think I'm ever going to read it. So let that go. So that's what happened with shelf one. Then I drew and I've got another shelf. It's number 18. So let me show you what's on there. Here is shelf 18. These are the books that made the cut. So we've got the Queen of the Orc series, which I was pretty sure I was going to unhaul, but after doing some research, it actually sounds like something I'd be really interested in reading. So I kept that one. Cameron Hurley. Like, at this point, I'm kind of braced for her writing, but I need a little bit of a break after finishing her Bell Down Apocrya. But those are definite keeps because I've heard that these are some of her best works as opposed to that other one that I read. I have the only three books in the Red Wall series that I haven't read yet. I kind of saved these for rainy days, but it'll be fun to finally have completed the series. And then the same author who wrote that wrote Castaways of the Flying Dutchman. I had this hardcover and then the next two in paperback without covers on them. So that's part of what I'm deciding to unhaul this time around. But I'm keeping this one. And then the one that I mentioned, Wizard's Castle. This is a science fiction book club bind up of the two books in this three book series. And this is the one that I had selected to read for the month, and I am waiting for an audio copy to come in because I don't have time to physically read it. But that one I will read and update you at the beginning of the next Read Burn Horde video to let you know how that went. I may even have time to watch the movie, which could be fun. These two. Science Fiction Book Club bind-ups of short stories edited by Marvin Kaye. We've got Fair Folk and Dragon Quintet. And I'm not a huge short story fan, and I was almost certain I was going to end up unhauling these, but after doing some research, I actually think I'd like to read them because I've discovered that there's some authors in here that I really want to read from. So the elf one, everybody not so much except for Megan Lindholm, who also happens to be Robin Hobb. Thank you very much. And then Tanith Lee, who I've heard is pretty good. I mean, you've got some... Robin Hobb content. Definitely hanging on to that. And then in here, it's the original story that Mercedes Lackey wrote for the Joust series that I love, which because she eventually expanded on it, I don't really need that story in particular, but there's also Tanith Lee and Elizabeth Moon and one from Orson Scott Card in here. So that, okay, I'll give that one a go as well. Plus, I do like the covers. And then these books were the ones that were kind of on the bubble. They're ones where I don't know that I'm going to get around to them, but I'm not sure I'm quite ready to unhaul them. In the Eyes of Heaven by David Keck. It's the first book in a series. When I did my Sunday shelfie, a couple people told me it was pretty good, so I thought I'd hang on to it. Faith Hunter. A lot of people did not care for this series. It's like an angel apocalypse one. This is the same author who wrote the Jane Yellow Rock series, and so I think that's why I'm hesitant to let it go. So I'm kind of on the fence with that. And then The Hidden Stars by Madeline Howard. This one's book two. This one, across the board, people said it was really confusing as far as the names were concerned. Complicated names, kind of a boring plot, 
nothing to write home about, just an average fantasy story. And so I just can't decide if I want to let it go or if I want to hang on to it. So these ones I know I'm keeping for sure, and these ones I was kind of letting percolate for a little bit. I might keep them for this round of Read Burn Horde, and then when I get back to shelf 18 on the next cycle, if I haven't read them by then, I'll, I'll probably let them go. So let me show you what I am unhauling from this section. Here's the stack of things that didn't make the cut. As I mentioned, the Castaway series by Gian Brian Jacks, I've got two without covers here. And I thought, you know, if I like the series that much, I'll probably invest in finding nice copies anyway. I don't need to hang on to the paperbacks as placeholders. So that's why those didn't make it. It's been one of those weeks. Fate of the Fallen by Kel Cade. Now, I picked this one up at Book Outlet. And incidentally, I accidentally bought two copies because, like, I must have that. It's only five bucks and it's like a fantasy hardcover. Cool. Oh, the irony that I'm not keeping either. This one seemed like a pretty straightforward fantasy series, but compared to the other ones on my shelves, I just don't think I'm going to get around to reading it. The reviews online really helped me kind of make my decision. It was the type of story that I don't think I'm interested in. I ended up spot reading a few pages here and there, and it just... You know, I may be kicking myself 10 years from now when I finally do get around to it, but my intention is to keep things on the shelf that I think I'm going to get to within the next five years or so. And this one was just not one of them. So I'm letting that go. And Ian Irving's A Shadow on the Glass, volume one of four of The View from the Mirror. I had a customer come in when I very first started bookselling telling me how amazing this series was. It was his all-time favorite fantasy series, and it, that was back when I really didn't know how to gauge how much someone else had read in a genre, and that that was important, because I was pretty new to the genre. So I just took him on face value, brought it home, and honestly, had I read it then, I probably would have enjoyed it, but I, I know what I like in fantasy stories these days, and everything I researched on this one showed that it had a lot of things that just wouldn't interest me anymore. So this is one of those that I don't think I'm ever going to get around to, but it is available in an ebook format. So if I ever get like the burning desire to dive into the series, I'll probably go that route. And I don't need a physical copy on my shelves. Plus, I think this was the series where there was a bunch of like really beautiful hardcovers. So if I do read it eventually, I'm not going to want this one that has kind of a like a hole through the front cover. <laughs> But anyway, it's a really cool cover, but it was just kind of a, like, meh storyline from what I could tell. So that's why I decided to let that one go. I don't know about y'all, but for me, it's a lot more fun to talk about these titles when I'm doing it in the moment and trying to make decisions. So, so I apologize for the quick recap of, like, here's everything I've done over the last couple months that you missed. But we'll get back to normal form next month. So for the time being, because I'm already screwed up with schedule... I'm, I'm going to just update you on Howl's Moving Castle in the next video, and I'm going to pick a new shelf, because I want to know what I'm going to be working on for November. Gotta give myself time to read it. Okay, we're going to pick a shelf. I would really appreciate it if I could get a shelf that was neither too high or too low and more like eye level. That would really be great. Okay. We have shelf number five. It's perfect. Oh, no. Okay. Well, you'll have to tune in next month to see what caused that reaction. So, yeah. But at least it's eye level. You may thank you for everyone who follows the series. I really appreciate your support of it. It's been really fun to run. I can't wait until I get back to my regular filming schedule and reading schedule with it. So until the next one, thanks again for watching, and I hope to catch you then. Bye.